jacket saw. Yes? I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. I've got to go away. Baby, it's cold outside. This evening. So, a Christmas classic or kind of creepy. You're listening to a 1944 song. It's called Baby, It's Cold Outside. And really, it has a lot of people talking this holiday season. And that's because last week, a Cleveland radio station pulled the song from its rotation of Christmas songs. And Canadian stations, including CBC Music, followed suit. In the era of the Me Too movement, there's renewed concern about the lyrics which center on a man pressuring a woman to stay the night. Exchanges include her wondering what's in a drink and him telling her not to, quote, hold out. So we want to talk about the controversy around the song and with that we've invited Kim Linekin who is a CBC pop culture columnist. She joins us right now in Vancouver and joining us in studio is Sophie Millman, a Juno award-winning jazz singer. Also her latest project, Yiddish Glory, just nominated for a Grammy on Friday. So congratulations on that. But let's talk about Baby, It's Cold Outside. And Kim, I'm going to begin with you uh, because you understand the decision to pull it from rotation. I sympathize with it because it's uh, it's to me it's not about what the song meant in its time. I actually think it's a brilliant song and it is sort of proto-feminist for its time. It's about a woman uh, wanting to stay the night and the guy supplying her with excuses she can use to get out of trouble with her family and friends. But you hear the song out of that context in this era and I find it a little creepy. I'm, I'm, I'm not alone. There's a lot of people who've been saying this for years now. An Atlanta radio station pulled this song five years ago already. So. Uh, it's, you know, it's just especially in the Me Too era, do you really want your 12-year-old listening to a girl saying no, 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 sir, and the guy say, mind if I'm moving closer? Um, it, you know, because the song takes so much contextualizing to understand properly, um, I find it fine to remove it from rotation, meaning you're not promoting it in the holiday season. It's fine for anybody to listen to it in their home. Um, uh, I just think uh, if a song could hurt people, if a date rape survivor could be triggered listening to this out, uh, out Christmas shopping, why would we want to keep playing it? Well, you know, I, I am going to play a bit of the song right now just to help uh, people at home further contextualize this. Uh, listen to some of the lyrics in the song. Uh, again, this is Baby, It's Cold Outside. Well, maybe just a half a drink more. Put some records on while I fall. The neighbors might But think. baby, it's bad out there. Say, what's in this no drink? It has to be had out there. You know, Sophie, when you hear Kim make that, that point, it certainly, it certainly a lot of people can understand that side of the debate, but there are others who love the song and don't want it pulled from rotation. Yeah, others who love the song, and especially, well, I actually, I'm glad Kim brought out the fact that the song, as written, actually has, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not, it's about a couple, um, a couple of people, a man and a woman, and they want to spend the night together, but he's allowed, society's not going to judge him, but society's gonna judge her harshly. So she's coming up with all kinds of excuses not to be judged as slutty, right, or mm -hmm. easy. And she's blaming the drink to excuse sort of her own flirtation and her own desire, which was very, very much ta taboo at that time. Mm -hmm. But I do really, I, where I disagree with Kim is everything needs context. We need 12 year olds don't understand very much really right and that's where parents and teachers come in and I believe that we need to educate our children and not suppress because if you eliminate everything from the past that doesn't make sense by today's standards and you refuse to give it context and you refuse to discuss it and you just say you make a blanket statement and say we're going to ban this song we're going to go on the air we're going to issue a press release we're going to ban the song it's a very very slippery slope so unless we want to end up with barney and paw patrol which are very simplified standardized whitewashed for lack of a better word um, versions of people and relationships everything is going to have complexity everything is going to require explanation whether in music in visual arts in plays in in books mm -hmm. so unless we just delete everything that we find uncomfortable now I think we leave the song where it is. Well, you know, Kim, as, as uh, we hear Sophie say that, I, I have to admit that I'm, I, this debate has given me reason to pause because this is actually was one of my favorite holiday songs. And part of the reason why I like it is because there's been a versatility to it where we're now seeing the, the roles change so that we're seeing female artists singing what the lyrics that were meant for the man and the, the male artists singing the lyrics that was meant for a woman, as well as same-sex uh, couples singing this song. So there's been kind of this um, elasticity and, and versatility to the song and yet now they're pulling it from the playlist are you worried about the precedent that sets uh 
Well, not so much because I don't see this as a ban. CBC hasn't banned it. Local CBC stations across the country still can play it. We're not saying this is a bad song, nobody play it. It's just uh, a programming decision, which you have so many holiday songs to choose from to put on rotation. Which ones are you going to promote? So I see nothing wrong with not promoting this song as a jet to general audiences. I think sophisticated audiences are fine listening to this anytime. You can listen to it in your own home. You can choose when you want to um, have your child there to listen to it with you and you can tell them about it and this whole idea of um, the role the gender roles reversed and things like that maybe that helps a little bit but it's still a song about one party pressuring the other party to stay the night and that just doesn't sit well in this era so um, uh, it, the, what I would have done instead of banning the song is play um, this other version of the song that Lydia Liza and Josiah Lemansky in the US uh, wrote where the guy is answering her all of her excuses not to you know to, to leave with that's fine with me let's have a date another time you reserve the right to say no and when I hear that version um, it almost makes me cry it's just such a, uh, a that's what you want how you want a guy to respond whether it's not really about sex is reversed it's about about, I'm trying to leave and this guy's really wanting me to stay um, so I think that's where the context now of hearing it today it just sounds extra creepy and um, I don't necessarily agree that uh, this is a ban so I that's one thing but I also think um, we're fine retiring forms of entertainment that can hurt people. We've retired blackface. We've retired the Crystal song, uh, He Hit Me and It Felt Like a Kiss, because even though that song was written as a critique of domestic abuse, it was written, Carol King thought it, it wrote it in horror over something her babysitter said. We now hear that as a somehow an endorsement of domestic abuse, so we retire that. Things mm -hmm. that can hurt people, we don't need to promote them and push them in public. Let me jump in because quickly losing time. So you, I know you want to respond to that, Sophie. Yeah, I want to respond to that. Blackface is a, a total abuse and uh, a mocking fun of an entire race of people. Um, that Carol King song that was brought up, again, it doesn't come across as a parody of um, a very moralistic time. It comes across, he hit me and it felt like a kiss. I mean, obviously, works that promote violence, works that promote the marginalization of a whole race of people or a religion, I'm, I'm against that, right? Um, especially if they're, especially modern works, right? But I think that this song is actually so incredibly innocent. And I think that, again, I will make the argument of the slippery slope, of where do we stop, right? Greek mythology is full of, uh, you know, stories and legends about rape and the conquering of, of women by men. And the galleries at the Louvre are full of paintings of the rape of Europa. Do we tear all of them down? Do we throw them out the way they did during, you know, the, with the burnings like in Nazi Germany and, you know, post pre-Renaissance Europe? I think it's, I think it's very dangerous. And if the song was just sort of retired quietly, that's one thing. But so many stations came out and made these grand statements about aligning themselves with Me Too. And I think banning the song cheapens Me Too. Okay, well, certainly we understand why people are debating it just from the, the viewpoint shared here. Uh, Sophie, thank you for that. Kim, thank, thank you. you for your contribution to the discussion. And thank Kim Linekin. And that is Kim Linekin, a CBC you. pop culture columnist in Vancouver, and Sophie Melman, a Juno award winning and now Grammy nominated jazz singer, with me here in studio. <laughs> thank you.